UBS Broadcasting Mall in El Tacoma, California, the unfinished furniture capital of the world, with Mr. Ernest Willie, who makes a living off the dead, and Mr. Vincent Price, who scares a lot of people, with the music of Happy Kind and the Mirth Makers, and me, I'm Jerry Hubbard. Hi, everybody. And now your host, the coast of the coast, Mr. Bart Gimbal! <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome again to America Tonight. I'm Barth Gimbel, and we've got a show tonight that's just um, jam-packed with guests, not nearly actually as jam-packed as the green room backstage. I don't, I don't think many uh, people actually know this, but we bring out, of course, four or five guests every night, and they're chosen from about 15 or 20 of what we call possibles that come down to the studio every night as potential guests. Now, a lot of the uh, selecting process is, of course, done at the last minute, sort of seat of the pants type of thing, and it usually falls on my shoulders to make the final decision as to who's on and who gets bumped and who has to go home and see who's on, that kind of thing. <laughs> now, I think that's unfair in a way, and... Because really, why should I be the one making the decision when the show is really for you? I get nothing out of this. I get, uh, <laughs> I get paid, but woo, not much. <laughs> so I thought we'd go down a list maybe of this week's suggested guests and let your applause determine which of the possibilities is in fact impossible. So, okay, fair enough. All right, we have a dentist. That's it, just a dentist. <laughs> Okay, okay, good. We have a man who's written a book on how to stay the same weight, and he's looking for a publisher. Does that, uh, okay. Uh, we have, uh, we have the singing pontoons. They're the Vietnamese refugee choir. They're down here. Okay, great. Good, they come down here every night. I think maybe having them on the show is the best way to get rid of them. So, uh, again, it, it was up to you, and we've decided. Okay, we have the head of the Save the Redwood Patio Furniture League. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, Barbara Streisand. Great. She's not on the list, but I just thought of it. It's a heck of an idea, and I thought maybe, if, hey, if one of you know her, know how to get a hold of her, please call her. It'd be great. We have a man whose uh, hands used to make all the cheese recipes on the Kraft Music Hour. Do you remember that on television? I have a guy. Okay, we'll have it. Uh, and one of the guys, kind of an interesting fella, he's a professor of physics at Cal State in El Tio, and he has written a, a separate educational folk song about every subatomic particle discovered so far. Okay. Uh, well, we told him to call Dick Cavett in the first place, so... Uh, we have an out-of-work television actress with very large breasts. Good, we think alike. I knew that. Okay, well, thank you very much for your help, and I think you can see your results uh, of your voting with your hands probably in the days to come, either here on the show, or if we don't use them, uh, they'll probably show up. I'm Tom Snyder, right? <laughs> How about a real nice guy in a blue jacket? <laughs> Mr. Jerry Hubbard. I think I agree with the audience. My favorite is that out-of-work actress you mentioned at the end. Her name happens to be Tiffany. I was talking to her just before right. the show, and she had, it's funny. I promised I'd, I'd put in a, a, a kind of a word for her. She came up and she said, Jerry, uh, could you get me on the show? I'll do anything. And I said, well, it's not really up to me. And she said, Jerry, I'll do anything. Do you understand? <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll put on a, a, in a word for you under one condition, that you uh, set me up on a blind date with one of your girlfriends or something. <laughs> Who knows, I may get lucky. <laughs> they all seem like very interesting guests, though. Some of them sounded boring as heck, but once they get out here and get into their, uh, into their stories, I... Well, I'm Jerry, sure. quite honestly, some of the guests are extremely boring, and yeah. once we have those boring guests out here, it makes me really appreciate, uh, all of a sudden, you look a lot better sitting yeah. here. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's nice to have you. Moving right along, uh, or actually sideways in this case, uh, it's time for a song by Happy Kind, done in that style that only Happy Kind would do. Or possibly would love to do. Who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, the music of Mr. Happy Kind. Leave me the 
this way I can't survive I can't stay alive Without your love Oh baby Don't leave me like this way no. I can't exist I surely miss Your tender kiss Don't leave me this way I can't exist, I'll surely miss your tender kiss. Don't leave me. That was terrific what Abby did, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Little applause never hurt. You know, I'm sure you've all noticed that every time a famous celebrity like Elvis Presley or Bing Crosby checks out of this world and registers in that big motel in the sky, the market is immediately flooded with all kinds of great things to buy about that person. My next guest happens to be the marketing genius behind it all. He's the president of Immortal Manufacturers. His name, Mr. Ernest Twilly. That's it. Take a load off. Um, Mr. Twilley, I guess uh, in your case, you're pretty happy when uh, business is actually dying, right? Oh, 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 no, Bart. I mean, uh, we don't uh, relish death per se, really? uh, but when a famous person uh, passes on, well, we feel that uh, someone ought to be there to lend a helping hand, uh, you know, to those fans who feel that deep loss and sense of grief. Okay, how exactly do you um, help those fans? Souvenirs, Bart. <laughs> we sell them anything they want. Are you the people who put out that um, that pillow with a picture of Elvis with the uh, with the rhinestone teeth and uh, the big oh, uh, oh, big? Oh yes, that was our pillow, the one that plays uh, "Don't Be Cruel" when you sit on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see, you just uh, sit down. And uh, you can actually hear, don't be cruel to a heart that's true. <laughs> kind of like a musical whoopee cushion. I don't know if you're yeah. sort of is, uh, I hate to say this. I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, but I, well, I hate to say I find it a bit, uh, a bit tasteless. For one thing, uh, Elvis's voice sounded very muffled. Oh, well. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just because you're sitting on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You get much better fidelity if you just stand up and push on his guitar. Oh. Well, Mr. Twilly, uh, the thing I'm, I'm kind of curious about is how on earth you get these things out on the market just no sooner than the celebrities passed away, you know? Oh, well, we do a lot of research. Uh, you see, we keep files on who's growing old and uh, who leads a fast life. Yeah. And, uh, and who flies a lot. You see, we're ready with a whole line of products at the drop of a hat. Absolutely. Like skydiving, that kind of thing, and oh, that's a hobby. Yes. Get it ready, I see. So, uh, well, that's great, at the drop of a hat. Sort of at the kick of the bucket, too, actually. <laughs> but uh, usually, of course, we're ready to hit the market five minutes after a celebrity's hit the ground. Fantastic. That's hardly enough time to really even shed a tear, isn't it? Oh, well, you're prepared for the tears. We've developed a whole new line. Oh, you have yeah, oh, these there they are. Here. That's yes. what these are. Okay. Yes, you see now, these are uh, disposable <laughs> tissues <laughs> with the uh, with the face of the beloved celebrity printed right on it like that. Now, here, give me another one. Sorry. Now, here we are. So you see, you can uh, wipe your tears <laughs> with the face of the deceased. Ah. <laughs> we have this other yes, one. Yes, and here's the... another one. Oh, another one of our favorites. You see there, there's old Elvis. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, every tissue is uh, suitable for framing. Yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> they cause the tears and they wipe them up. Well, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> Tonight, in your honor, I'm very proud to announce to the audience here in the studio and to you a complete new line of Barth Gimbel Remembrances.
Let's tell them the like... audience reaction. They're anxious to uh, be able to use some of these, get their hands on some. <laughs> Yeah, what well, I mean is, unfortunately, I'm still very much alive. But actually, that shouldn't stop our audience from maybe uh, sending away for some or all of these wonderful things that you have here in the Garth Gimble, Barth Gimble Memorial. Um, Jerry, can you tell them more about it? Oh, uh, that's right, Barth. Just send five dollars and ninety-five cents for your Barth Gimble Memorial catalog today. <laughs> Choose from over a hundred products, such as the uh, Barth Gimble plastic bust. Uh, there's these Barth Gimble playing cards. <laughs> Barth, of course, is the Joker in his picture on the back of every card. And, uh, I think uh, some of them uh, uh, are marked as you would have wanted it. Uh, Barth Gimbal salt and pepper shakers. We have, of course, the uh, Barth Gimbal ashtray for those ashes, not yours, but the cigarettes. And, uh, of course, we have the Barth Gimbal uh, fake mustache. So that's uh, $5.95 to Gimbal Co. Enterprises West, Post Office Box 78924, El Tacoma, California, 94991. Oh, that's good, mm -hmm. Jerry. I had no idea I was my, my company was part of that. It's actually a great idea. And thank you, Mr. Twilly, very much for, uh, for remembering me and showing up here on the show. And for you people out there, you know, why wait until I'm late to tell me I'm great? <laughs> Jerry. We'll be right back after these words. We'll return to Martin Mull in America tonight in a moment. We're back. You know, over the last uh, 20 or 30 years, there have been many, many movies made in Hollywood. And I tell you that because maybe you didn't, but it's true. And my next guest has certainly been in some of them. Please welcome Mr. Vincent Price. Uh -huh. What have you been doing? Oh, what's, got some letters from the audience. They all want to know the same thing. Are those your real teeth? <laughs> Barth, you know, I've been asked a lot of questions on talk shows, and that, that caps them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, great. Oh, my gosh. Woo. Well, um, you know, I wondered, uh, I've seen you in know, so many movies where you have those long teeth, and I knew those weren't yours. You'd never get on the Hollywood squares. <laughs> Right, Peter Marshall wears those. Oh, really? <laughs> His overbite is very big. Yeah, well, it's overbite, overkill, it's over yeah. everything, over hill, over dale. It's yeah. So, uh, you know, I've seen you, uh, but I have seen you in so many uh, of the movies. Uh, you were in uh, The Fall of the House of Ushers. Yeah. That wonderful. Was that in, uh, wonderful. The, the House of Wax, yeah. which incidentally was not about uh, women soldiers, uh, but uh, it was about people. <laughs> they poured wax over actually uh, dead people. Live people. Yes. Yeah. It was live people. Yeah, there were live people who right. were wax over them. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. It was great fun. Yeah. How do you feel? How do you feel? <laughs> but, um, you know, you've scared me so many times in those movies, I did want to kind of scare you. Yeah. Does, uh, do you scare easy? Does anything scare you? Not very much. Nothing? No, being on this show scares me. Oh, <laughs> well, there's a, there's a bat over your head with the face of a man. <laughs> Um, look into my eyes, what do you see? And, uh, come with me to the mysterious house filled with strange women, the house of wax. <laughs> that didn't scare you? None of that scares you? No. 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 Jerry? Mm. Oh, look, Jack. <laughs> it's got... <laughs> No, but what do you think about my potential? Seriously, look at that. No. <laughs> Keep watching me. Yeah. There's going to be a little mouse right oh. there, Jerry. You'll be so excited. Maybe you'll get scared yourself. <laughs> How do you feel about the new wave of all the science fiction uh, movies coming now with the Star Wars and Close Encounters and everything like that? Are you going to be doing some more things in that area? Well, I hope so. They're mechanizing me for the next picture. Oh, that's yes, great. Yes, I go right into orbit. That's fantastic. <laughs> On my own gas. Well... <laughs> Listen, Vincent, I know you didn't come down here to get bummed out by Jerry. You're here for a very special reason. Mr. Price, 
is actually in Alta Coma tonight for the official opening of the Alta Coma. Alta Coma. I'm so excited, I can't even say it. <laughs> Alta Coma Museum of Modern Art. That's right. That's right. I'm here to officiate at the opening of the Alta Coma Museum of Modern Art. I haven't seen the pictures, but I, I'm sure they're delightful. Oh, they are. Yes, the, are they? The old Pinto wagon pulled in today, and I was the first one out there. It was like a hatchback. And yeah. We pulled them out, and they're great. They're wonderful. So uh, yeah. I figured maybe the best thing we can go over and take a little oh, look here. So Actually, as you know, the museum didn't get the financial aid it needed so desperately, and uh, so the museum's uh, pieces are on on loan. In fact, the museum itself is on loan, which is unique for a uh, museum situation. <laughs> but uh, they're from the personal collections of various uh, residents here in Alta Coma. Let's go have a look. All right. Okay. Over here. Walk this way. Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is uh, the first one. Now, I don't think this is part of it. This what is just... What do you mean, walk that way? I don't know. I don't think he wanted to. You always walk that way? I don't know what that means. Um, As you know, Vincent Price is a connoisseur of fine art, and so maybe we can learn yes, something about I'm really very, very, very eager know. to see it. Yeah. Jerry, I, that's not the painting. You want to take it No, I off. know. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> You know, that's a very interesting thing. It really is. I, I was in the artist's studio in Tijuana. Really? Yes. He, uh, he paints them on the wall, and then he cuts them out, and that way he gets windows. It's <laughs> incredible. Now, this is actually uh, a Toreador to show you people at home. This is uh, on velvet here. Toreador. That says elbow. That's, well, I don't know the difference, but something can come <laughs> You can tell it from his elbow. Yeah, you actually can, but I can't say it from no. his elbow. Oh, I see yeah. what you mean. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's a bull. That's a bull and, yeah. a, and a gentleman, and this kind of reeks of mystery down here. We don't know what yes, that is. I don't know what that is, and I don't really want to know what that is. Do you? I mean, it's sort of blood and sand. We well, have we have others. Do you have others? Yes, oh. sir. Yeah, Good. Understand. Don't want anything to happen to this. <laughs> you can say that's oh. some dogs, so you can say... Go fetch the next picture. It's a, it's a very fetching picture. What do you think the title of it is? I, I would say it is, you know, the dealer takes three or I think so, something like that. Somebody and the chips are take... down. Yeah. Okay. That's the okay. <laughs> you have another back there? They're playing, uh, playing cards doggy fashion there, which is the same as the, the people would. It's it. They're just kind of... Uh, Animals making people out of themselves. Yeah. I have another surprise for you, Vincent. Oh. Oh. It's the blue nun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now this oh, actually is gee, abstract. It's wonderful, though. You know, you know, Marcel Duchamp did a very famous picture called "Nude Descending a Staircase." That's right. And when the critics first saw it, they said it was an explosion in a shingle factory. Really? <laughs> and this is an explosion in a spaghetti in factory. In Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? That probably is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It reminds me of the sign that Happy has over his taco and run. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, and those, I hope I didn't offend him. No, no, no. He does have a sign like that, and his motto is, one taco coming up. Uh, <laughs> food to go. <laughs> now, wait a second. Oh, oh, wow. oh, oh, now it's a whole different thing. But you see, now you understand it. That's a little bit more. Oh, of course. Look, I mean, see, here's the, here's here's the ride. That's yeah, Earth, that's down Earth. there, just that little brown dot. And this is the spaghetti, yeah. going up like that. Oh, it's very handsome. It Mr. Really Price, is. Yes, are, are you into sculpture? Yes, I'm into sculpture, sculpture yeah. yes. I should mention also, in case you wonder, you own something like this, how to put it on the wall at home. You know, you don't want to hang it wrong. I've seen in hotels, you take four large lug bolts through all four <laughs> corners. That way, an over-eager guest yes. at your home who really likes art. Uh, is that more. why they do that? That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Move this, get all this right. out of the picture, or the picture out of the picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the sculpture, this will be out in the sculpture garden yeah. at the Alta Coma Museum of Modern Art. Rain or shine, why? We'll have... This is going to be in front of the museum? I don't know, uh, but I, th you, I think it's it's You terrific. throw balls in there? Oh, you get it? You know, I think this no. is just the artist's comment about some of the minorities in this country not quite having the luck of the others and using the idea of catching the brass ring, you know, as, as a oh. symbol of good luck. <laughs> That's, gentleman has caught the good luck, and I think that's what he's trying to say. That is wonderful. You know, I, I really think art, when, when it's beautifully expressed like that, you're a poet. Thank you. It could also be just to throw darts through. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words. Don't go away.
that's about all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank my guest, Mr. Ernest Twilley, who uh, maybe, who knows, when you kick the bucket, we'll be selling little bow ties that light up. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks especially to our wonderful special guest star, Mr. Vincent Price. I think... Better, better not make any souvenirs of him, or he will come back to get his residuals. <laughs> And we hope to see you all down at the Al Tacoma Museum of Modern Art, the grand opening tonight. Apparently, uh, bring an ID, there is wine, okay? And uh, we'll all be down there. It's ties and jackets for the men, and slacks are not permitted for the ladies, okay? See you tonight, 8 o'clock, Al Tacoma Museum of Modern Art. Thank you, happy kind. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. A real pleasure. Thank you. See you tomorrow night. studio audience will receive the following. Classic curves from Ditto's, the field fit company. Pants to make every woman feel beautiful. In sizes 3 to 13 and 8 to 18. And a $25 gift certificate from Lillian Burns Catalog. Jewelry, gifts, decor, personalized items, and things from practical to whimsical. And wet your whistle with Lip Quencher, the moisturizing lipstick by Chapstick in 24 wet, wonderful colors. Join in on the fun as a wild, unpredictable Monty Python comes your way every Monday through Saturday at 11 p.m. Next, our feature, Red Carter. Also appearing on tonight's show were Robert Casper as Ernest Twilley and a special guest appearance by Mr. Vincent Price. or return.